Hey guys, do you have one of these vents? Now, I just did a previous video talking about using this stuff to repair these vents with, but when you got one that's this gone, and that was the problem we had, you see it, it's all that gone, um, it's not easy to repair it, and they did a bunch of garbage to it. So, this is an escape vent for an RV. It has the standard C hinge, C-style hinge. Now you have different ones and you're going to have to drill out your rivets on the back when you do this type of thing to it. But I'm working with some 20 gauge steel that is just off of a salvage. This was a roof of a truck at one time, so I just saved it, straightened it out, and we're going to use this. Now, one of the things about it is you have to make your measurement here and then repeat that measurement here so that you can get the width of the steel you're going to use. So in our case, we're 18 inches from there to here and 25 inches from here to there. Now I've got my measurements right there. What we're going to do is we're going to measure in an inch and a quarter here, an inch and a quarter here, and then of course I've got to square my edges. These edges have been squared and I'm going to use the uh, metal that's from a truck cap to make a cap replacement for an escape hatch. These escape hatches, if you look at the video right up here, I'll put the link to it, that I uploaded a video about the Bondo, and I put you some links down there to that if it makes sense to you to use that. Now, those are not hard to get off, but if you have difficulty, look at the ends where they have maybe crimped it to keep it from sliding and straighten it up and pull it off. Um, you might have to clean a lot of your material off of there to get to it. The, uh, the metal we're working with, we're going to literally just take this metal and cut it an inch and a quarter too big. So we're going to be going with uh, 27 and three quarters will be our length. And then over here, and I'll, I'll probably give it an extra eighth for the bend. And over here, we're looking at uh, 20.5. So now, if you if you have a 15 by 22, then you're looking at you know the difference there. But just realize you have the space here that is going to be a flap. Just imagine that being pulled up like that, uh, both sides, and then your measurement. So if you measure the width from here to the other side, you're going to add whatever this is because that's what's going to cover when your cover goes down. Now we're going to get this done here, and I'm gonna, I might even put a uh, stiffener on it but this is the piece we're working with let me get it sized and I'll show you how we're gonna make this out of a uh, uh, metal to replace fiber reinforced plastic FRP fiberglass that's what we're working with all right now I've marked it out and what I ended up with was 27 and 7 8 and 20 and 5 8 now that's an eighth inch more than my 27 3 quarter and 20 and a half and the reason I do that is because when I bend that metal, so when my inch and a quarter is measured inward from the line, I'm going to bend that metal. It's going to lose me a little bit of where my gasket will go. So I give it just a little extra, 16th extra, you know, in the whole rim. That's a little idea there to make sure you don't make her too tight. The size doesn't matter that much on it as long as you exceed where your gasket's going to hit. You can see where that gasket's been hitting way out on the edge. So making it... A little bigger is not going to hurt it. I'm using my multi-purpose three-in-one roller cutter bender. Um, let's go see what it did. Down here in the shop, while Daniel's up there silver coating the roof. Nice job of it. We're doing the final repairs, and you can see this was passed using the fiberglass. It was barely even usable for what it was. It just fell apart. If you're lucky, you can catch it like I show you in that other video. Uh, look at my channel on how to do it with fiberglass repair, because that being FRP, it works great. But we built a new one, and we have the edge full rounded, and we're going to, and I, of course I've creased it to give it a rise so it sheds water off, but we have to get the support pieces put into it in the center, and around the rim, we'll get those in next. Just, just rivet it in, you know, crossed here. We'll get those in and the corners. So I've made me some corner pieces to go on. And we'll seal those off and spot them in. So now we'll have a 20 gauge 
very hail resistant roof that can handle many a year instead of that one there. I think that was only like probably five, seven years old, somewhere in that range. So let's get the rest of this finished up. All right, guys, y'all stay tuned. We're going to do some more. Here it is, the finished product of what used to be that crazy thing busted all to pieces. And um, now we have this nice metal, and I used some of the uh, flex on the end of the rivets when I put them in, so it's really good. And inside, we have, now you want to make sure here, I'm going to uh, explain this right quick. Make sure you record your orientation because you're going to be a half inch off on the uh, slider that is for your hardware that raises and lowers this. So make sure that you are in the right area for that. Um, right here we have the hinge and the hinge fits on the inside and you can see I tweaked the metal back with my little bender all the way down because it has to just get to that point of the rollover of the C. You see there? And I had a slight tear in my gasket but it's going to be okay. But there we go. Now we are fully made up. I have I made me a piece of hat metal. So if you guys, a lot of people don't know, this is hat metal, and you can use this in amazing amount of things. You can take garage door sections you buy used, and you can attach this to it every foot or every 16 inches like studs, and screw it to the garage doors, and you can actually make a solid real wall out of garage doors that are two and a quarter foam insulated. Um, you can buy them commercial grade ones used for almost nothing and use hat metal and then you have room for your wiring and all that so But there is my made Escape hatch 100% metal now we are going to put a insulative Surface inside of this and Install it so There we go now. I'll show you it right quick with a paint job Okay, so it's got a nice white paint job of the Zinser, which is a one, two, three primer, all services, great for metal, and um, does a fine job on this, and it'll now be prepped with a primer coat for the silver coat also to be put on here, the alum aluminum uh, or aluminized roofing material. So I'll get it on the roof right quick and give you a final view. All right, guys, a little uh, dirty from the install. These uh, safety hatches or escape hatches, they only open about 45 degrees, which is just fine for this. And however, it works great. Um, when you put these in, you're going to slide them right back in and then put your hardware all back on. And there you go. Daniel, crank that down. There you go. Total sealed job. Uh, pop your safety hatch. And out Daniel comes, covered in silver stuff. So he's been working on the roof out here. Daniel don't care, do you? No. All right, there you go, guys. Build it yourself.